The Excellent Wife is what we're looking at this week. Yes, we're taking a look at the fruit of her hands. We're in Proverbs chapter 31. And today we're looking at 27 through 29. So 27, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. All right, so the first thing we see is that she works from home. We already see that. She's a hard worker. She looks well to the ways of her household, or as Luther translated, how it goes in her house. So she's looking after how it goes in her house. And the excellent wife directs the organization and management of her house, seeing that it's functioning well and ensuring that it is taking the right course. So her husband has laid out this idea of where they're going to go, and he's kind of you know, plotting the, the course of the family here, and then she makes sure that that's what happens. She she implements the plan. And uh, and that's how it works. That's how it functions well. You know, that's how we usually organize different businesses or military ideas. I have someone over the top that's making the plans and, and, and has the, uh, you know, the overall mission plan there all set up and how this is going to go is figured out some of the, uh, the problems that could come and, and figuring out all these things. And then you have the people that are underneath them implementing that plan. And so that's what the wife does. She implements the plan. She looks well to the way of her house, makes sure that everything is functioning well, that the kids are being taken care of. If she has employees or there's employees of the family, that they are being paid and that everything is going well there. And uh, so all those things we looked at already before, she is making sure that that's happening. She's taking that visit that authority and using that authority since her position is such and she is wise she doesn't have time to be a sluggard right she chooses not to eat the bread of idleness she chooses not to eat it she doesn't it's there she could be idle if she wanted to but she chooses not to eat the bread of idleness she doesn't want the bread of idleness she wants the bread of fruitfulness is what we're going to find down below so she wants to eat that bread that's fruitful she wants to get, you know, something that's going to, it's going to matter. It's going to last. It's going to be something that is substantial. It's going to be good. And so that's what the, the uh, excellent wife is looking for. Not idleness, but, um, but fruitfulness. And then we have verses 28 through 29 where we see that the excellent wife is blessed and praised by her family. Because of all these attributes that this woman has and she's working hard and doing all the things she's supposed to be doing and being wise uh, this godly woman has her children rise up and call her blessed they recognize in her the blessing of god and the blessings that they have received through her so this is the consequence right this is this is the fruit really of her hands is that her children and her husband are going to bless her and praise her this is her reward. This is the blessing of her family. Like, Thank you. This is what I needed. Thank you for providing for me. You know, this may not happen as their children, but as they get older, definitely. But the, her children will rise up and bless her. Um, you know, little kids, maybe not. But they often do, right? Thank you, Mom, for this. Thank you, Dad, for this. And so they will bless you, you know, by giving you thanks, by giving you um, praise, oh, I got the best mom, she does all these things for me, and, and they might recognize that. And, uh, and so if you keep this consistent, um, constant behavior, character traits that, that the excellent wife has, then the children have no reason not to rise up and bless her, right? They have no reason to do that. Um, they should rise up and do that. And uh, and so it's it's interesting to think about, but she really they the children she's not giving the children a reason. Now a lot of women do give their children a reason to not bless them, but the excellent wife works hard so that the the children have every reason to do that. There's nothing she has done that they could be like, "Well, you're a horrible mom. You did this bad. You did this bad. Look at how you treated this person." You know, there's nothing there. She's been you know diligent. If she's made a mistake, then she repents. And fears the Lord. And so you see this kind of excellent wife doesn't <clears throat> need to worry about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. She she will be blessed by her children. And her husband also recognizes this in her and gives her praise. He has seen that many daughters have done well. There are many examples of godly women, right? There's many examples of godly women. 
But in her husband's eyes, she has excelled above them all, as he should say, as she should in his eyes. She's number one because she's fit for him. She's not fit for any other man. She's fit for him. She's been molded and and uh, conformed to his image, right? <clears throat> Just as they're conformed and molded to Christ's image. And so they're molded together. They are now one flesh. They're mingled together. And... Um, that's why, and, you know, and they're molded to Christ together. So you get that idea. Um, so the husband praises her as he should. And I met, I've sat under several pastors where they, I rarely heard them ever praise their wives. Like, give her praise. I mean, she's married to you, so she already <laughs> deserves praise. But, you know, I've heard many pastors never, you know, there's some that never praise their wives. And that's not good. And so you should praise their wives, and many husbands don't praise their wives before others. Like, give her praise. Like, there's, if you're married, if you chose to marry her, there's got to be something in there that you found praiseworthy. Otherwise, why did you marry her? Um, why did you even spend time with her in the beginning? And if that didn't develop, that didn't grow, that's pretty much your fault, man. But, you know, you didn't, you didn't do your job to help her and help her to grow. That's, that was your problem. Uh, that's your problem now because you didn't do what you're supposed to be doing. So, but yeah. So he rises up and prays her. That's what a beautiful image this is. That the children rise up, they're blessing her. Then the husband goes out and says, "You know, many women are great. There's many great women, but you have excelled them all, lady. You're 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 the best in my eyes. You're my favorite one ever, and uh, you're the favorite woman I." I of all women out there in the world, you're my favorite because you are worthy of praise. You are, you are dignified. You are strong, and you have done right by our family. And so I will praise you. I will praise you in the gates, and let those people know. I will praise you, um, and let everyone know that I can tell, you know, in high places, that you are an excellent wife, and that's what men should be doing. Now, many men don't do that. Many men I know don't do that. And that's sad. You know, praise your wife. Praise your wife to your uh, to your friends. You know, say, man, my wife is awesome. I got a great wife. I can't complain. I could, <laughs> you know, she has right to complain because I'm not the husband I should be, but you know, she far excels any woman I know. And so that's what we should be doing. I mean, how much more, uh, you know, how, <laughs> you want to be romantic? There you go. That's romance right there. So, we should be praising our children. We should encourage our children to rise up and call her blessed. Look at what she's done for you. Look at what she's given to you. You know, you have every reason to bless this woman. And so that's what we need to be doing. Well, how encouraging is that? How, how exciting is it to be a part of that? It's very exciting, let me tell you. And uh, it is a blessed thing to be a part of a family that does that. So, but you can seek that. If you don't have that now, seek it. Run after it. Get it. Go after it, right? <laughs> Don't, don't, don't uh, just say, well, that's not us. That's not my wife. Well, help her out. Get to that place. You can do it. All right, so that's the end of our study for today. Come back next time. We'll look at verses 30 and 31.